So, um, Jason, you messaged us this uh, list <laughs> um, of uh, the 10 best performances directed by Christopher Nolan. Yeah, we should probably, when we post this thing, we can like throw it in as a comment or something for, so people can look at it. <laughs> yeah, we'll give uh, Screen Rant uh, credit for it, for giving us this yeah. idea. Yes. Yeah. That'd be a good idea. <laughs> um, I guess the one thing I would uh, want to think first is like, is there anything that's missing here that I might be worth considering? Like people that are not 10. on the list? On their There's list? There's notable, because right now... Oh, I, list... I have different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't agree with all of theirs. I, yeah, I, I so, only agreed with the top two, actually. So it's yeah. So I guess um, just to quickly go over them, just to uh, an idea. Oh, yeah, so. let's talk about screen rants. Yeah. Yeah. So like it's number one, Heath uh, Ledger and the Joker. Um, not in the Joker, as the Joker <laughs> in the Dark Knight. Um, Matthew McConaughey in Interstellar, Kristen Bale. In the Prestige, Hugh Jackman in the Prestige. That's interesting that they got like a yeah. lot of love for the Prestige. Uh, DiCaprio in Inception, Guy Pierce for Memento, Christian Bale for Batman. I guess Batman Begins, because that was his, his when he shined the most in that trilogy. Uh, Aaron Eckhart, Two Face. Al Pacino in Insomnia and Jessica Chastain and in Interstellar. Um, what what are other ones? Can you think of other standout performances? I I, mean, I, I have some. I, Go ahead. How the hell is Killian Murphy nowhere? Ah, yeah. that's a good one. I didn't even. I I did <laughs> think about him, but I didn't put him on mine. <laughs> he is excellent. But yeah, and and which one? <laughs> Although he, well, I think that you'd have to go with the, with Batman Begins. I mean, he barely has a part in the second one. Yeah, and he has a very very small part in um in uh, Dunkirk and Dunkirk and Inception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I I mean, the thing is, you have to bring up Dunkirk because he's still playing like a a corporal in the military, and he's doing it at the age of like forty seven. <laughs> 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 and you still that's believe him? Kind of no, that's weird. acting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, um, I'll tell you because um, you know we could belabor this a lot, so I'll just spew mine out real quick. Um, I put, uh, and I'm not a hundred percent sure about the order of this, but I'm pretty sure this is right around where I'd put it. Uh, I put Heath Ledger uh, in The Dark Knight. Yeah, Ma Matthew McConaughey in Interstellar. Um, Gary Oldman, and I was trying to decide if I should put Batman Begins or The Dark Knight, but I feel like probably The Dark Knight because I feel like he, even though he has more parts, like more scenes, I should say, in the uh, the first one in Batman Begins, I really think that he was really going for it in the second one. Um, but uh, <clears throat> then um, I put uh, David Isaiah Washington in Tenet because I do think that even though we discussed that movie at length and it does have its issues, I think he's one of the bright, shining things in that movie for sure. Um, then I put Christian Bale and I kind of put Batman slash the prestige <laughs> because I was thinking about him in the prestige, like they, they listed on screen rants list. But um, I like to think about Christian Bale's performance in The Dark Knight because I remember when that movie came out and I was saying, I feel so bad for this guy. Like, so bad for him because he is trying, he is acting his pants off in this movie and he's got a mask covering his face for half of his face for most of the movie and he's got all these scenes with Gary Oldman and, you know, Michael Caine and Heath Ledger and Aaron Eckhart and the latter two probably giving some of the performances of, the, of their entire career, you know, and it's like, it's just messed up, you know, <laughs> it's not fair, <laughs> but, uh, and then uh, after that, I, I put Aaron Eckhart is in the dark night. Um, and then I put Joseph Gordon Levitt in inception. I really liked his performance. Um, certainly a lot better than his one in, in Batman three. <laughs> uh, and uh, then, um, 
Well, one thing that you have to give to Christian Bale in The Dark Knight is that he managed to go through an entire sequence pretending that the cartridge of the bullet was uh, extracted from a wall uh, and not just ejected from the gun. Oh my god. We have talked let that about go. this so <laughs> many times. That is not what was happening in the script. That was a flaw from the people <laughs> in post-production. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that still... Actually, I didn't know that. That's good to know. That, that, that still just flew by the eyes of everybody. Oh, I agree. On, it's a terribly stupid mistake. <laughs> on a multi-million dollar movie. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a terribly stupid mistake. But I mean, I, I just want to point out that it's not the writer's fault. That's all I'm saying. You yeah. know? <laughs> or the actor's. It's not the writer's or the actor's fault. <laughs> <laughs> all right so anyway um but, but, uh, can can we still demonstrably say that christopher nolan just doesn't know how guns work i i thought you were being way too harsh when we did our tenant episode but the more and more i've thought about it i actually think that the bullet stuff in the reversed bullet stuff in tenant might be the thing that makes the least sense it's yeah. the, probably the the thing that breaks the movie actually because the movie. no i'm serious like i i have to assume space time continue if you were actually if your bullets and stuff was moving backwards and then th in the scene where they explain everything he he she says try it with the bullet and she she puts her hand out and the bullet jumps from the table into her hand and then uh and he's like okay and she sets it down and he tries and he can't get it to work and she goes you have to imagine in your head that you tossed it first and then it'll leap back into your hand backwards. And he puts his hand out again and it does. It leaps into his hand moving backwards. And I'm like, okay, with any inanimate object, that makes sense. But a bullet has at least two important parts, the, 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 the shell casing and the bullet projectile itself, not to mention all the propellant and everything inside. And mm -hmm. that means if it's moving backwards using the theory that they just described, then that means you have to imagine what that you gathered up all that, the, the shell casing off the ground and imagine the thing being pulled into, you know, like uh, from the wall into the gun and the two pieces coming together inside. The, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. You know, yeah. it would make sense if it was an arrow that you were firing from a bow <laughs> or something, but the, I, I actually have to give it to you, Matt. I, I was, I was complaining during that episode that you were being too harsh on Christopher Nolan. And I still think that you are <laughs> way too obsessed with this dark Knight bullet problem. Cause it is a problem, but it does not ruin the movie in any way, but that tenant thing does not make sense. Okay. That's good well, to know. Yeah. At least you can agree on that. I, I go, you're you're ex Israeli military. I mean, you know how bullets work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I don't really care too much about that. That's like not gonna kill, make or break a, a movie for me. But but what was the? Yeah, I, I should watch Tenet again just for the bullet thing. I mean, because because the bullet, like, what is it like? Uh, the bullet, like, because he um, this is traveling backwards, I guess. Yeah, but but the bullet can't because the bullet would have to be attached to the to the cylinder to the, uh, the, the shell where the gunpowder is. Yeah, 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 that too. But yeah. it's not. But it's yeah. it's gets pulled out. Yeah, just for so it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> and also, in the um, that's the other thing is like the the bullet coming out of the wall in the dark night. Like you, the the fingerprint would be on the casing, not on the bullet itself. Well, see, that's the thing. That's what Matt was talking about. So just to be clear, Matt was complaining that in The Dark Knight, they, there's this part uh, where he's at a crime scene and he's uh, and uses brick. a little Dremel machine to like take a brick out of the wall to yeah. retrieve fragments of a bullet. And uh, the cool scene is that it's like, you know, uh, <clears throat> Gary Oldman says to him, you're going to try to get for uh ballistics off of a off of a shattered bullet and then the batman line is you know 
I'm going to do more than that. I'll get a fingerprint, you know, you know, yeah. which is of course insanely ridiculous, but they're trying to say he's got a Batman computer. That's like so good that it can do that. Uh, so essentially he takes the fragments, he puts it in the machine back in the bat cave or whatever he's using as a bat cave in this movie. And, yeah. um, and then tries to recreate the, the scenario so that he can get the fingerprints. And it's a cool little scene that there are two things that are insanely stupid about this scene. Um, number one is that the thing he's using to recreate the, uh, the experiment, he's got like several brick walls and he's firing several bullets to kind of get this thing. And it's this giant, like Gatling gun thing, which is insanely stupid. I don't know what, what the bullet was actually supposed to be fired out of. I don't remember, but I'm assuming a handgun yeah, know, or something. <laughs> uh, so it's like really dumb that yeah. he's using some stupid Gatling gun. That is a prop department thing. I'm telling yeah. you, there is a thing entirely look, different. Than, yeah. yeah, you if you look at movies like Armageddon, there's all these moments in movies, action movies particularly, where they're like, you know what, movies are better when you have a Gatling gun. And I kind of agree, but <laughs> you have to be smart about it. You can't just it just doesn't make sense. But if you could get over the Gatling gun thing. The part that Matt is complaining about is that when it shows the the bat computer or whatever analyzing the thing, it shows fragments coming together on a little wireframe animation and then a fingerprint on a bullet at, that is showing, you know, like that it got fired and then it came together and it's reading the fingerprint. The problem is that the post-production people who were on the Dark Knight animated it so that the fingerprint is not on the tip of the bullet or the corner of the tip no, of the not, bullet. Not on the actual bullet. Well, <laughs> I, I I could be wrong. I I was if I, I remembered it being on like the side, which makes sense because that's largely where people push when they you know push a bullet into a magazine, but part of your finger could very easily touch the tip of the bullet, but yeah. where they have it touching, regardless of whether Matt's correct and it shows the casing, or if I'm correct and it's just on the side, if it were on the side of the bullet, that portion of the bullet would be underneath the casing, therefore physically impossible for the finger to touch it. You know, it would therefore touch the part Matt was talking about, the casing on the outside. Either way, there's no fingerprint in on the bullet in that scenario but if they had just simply shifted the fingerprint to look like it was being pushed from the bullet which is a plausible thing i mean a lot of magazines you kind of have to do it like a push down and then back kind of motion to kind of get them in there and so it's like it's not impossible to think that somebody's finger would be on the tip of the bullet or, or even on the side of the the round part of the bullet the head you know or whatever it's very possible but they just animated it in this weird spot where if you look at it, you just, your brain goes, wait, that makes no sense whatsoever. No, it, no, it, it, it was animated like full bore, like fingerprint on the freaking casing. All right. I'll take your word for it. I, I got to watch the movie again, but okay. either way, so the question is, uh, is that the worst acting in a Christopher Nolan movie, oh <laughs> that, <God>. bullet. <laughs> <The bullet. laughs> um, that bullet. That's like not convincing. <laughs> the funniest part is that if that was all they were looking for, they could have just scooped it up off the ground probably because casings fall all when you eject out of the gun, they're all over the ground. Cops look for that stuff all the time. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> After. Aaron Eckhart in Dark Knight. I put Joseph Gordon-Levitt in Inception, uh, Jessica Chastain in Interstellar. And then for eight and nine, I had kind of a three-way tie. Uh, I, I thought Hugh Jackman in The Prestige, Guy Pearce in Memento, or Michael Caine in The Prestige. I particularly chose The Prestige because I love all of his early scenes in that movie where he's talking to the judge and then how that, that demeanor changes when he's talking later on in the movie with the other characters and he's such a father figure to Hugh Jackman and stuff like that I really like that and then um even though the uh I don't know which of those I'd cut for the 
the top 10 because that's those three would fill up my eight and or my nine and 10 spots. Uh, but I did want to do an honorable mention of Joey pants in, um, in memento. I thought he was very good, but he did not make the list. Yeah. Uh, Michael Kane in the prestige kind of s- sticks out to me. I, 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 for a lot of reasons, but not the least of which is when he's, he has that discussion with Hugh Jackman and uh, you know, Michael Caine just kind of says, uh, you know, that story that I told you about the, uh, the sailor who was drowning and Hugh Jackman said, uh, Oh yeah. It, it, yeah. He said it was like going home and he, Michael Caine just says, I lied. He just said it was agony. <laughs> hmm. and, and the reaction that that uh elicited from Hugh Jackman was just like you yeah, know oh, wow yeah uh kind of punched me in the gut there <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's definitely a good performance <laughs> i mean still it, it is kind of amazing how you can actually put out uh, a list of top 10 performances and uh, not have Gary Oldman on it. <laughs> not, <laughs> I had him online. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It, it's uh, I mean, <laughs> the funny thing is like Gary Oldman as Gordon in so many ways, that is precisely why Gary Oldman is the greatest actor who's ever lived. And it's it's it is because people kind of overlook his Gordon because he's actually subtle as Gordon. He's yeah. just I, I, I mean he's not you know he's not doing his uh, what Spivey or whatever as uh, you know in True Romance he's not over the top he's not being the Gary Oldman that people who even know who Gary Oldman is expects Gary Oldman to be. He's just, he's about as subtle as Gary Oldman gets and he's great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually, I don't know if you saw this, but there was actually a, a, a whole um, article that came out that, you know, was talking about how, um, uh, Christopher Nolan actually wanted, I think it was Kurt Russell to play hmm. Gordon. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it was actually like a, a, a whole bunch of accidents and, um, you know, different things that happened that resulted in Gary Oldman but uh, playing him. But, you know, hmm. I mean, you know he's yeah yeah I, I, you know he i think he kind of knocked it out of the park without people noticing yeah if i ever met gary oldman um i i know i wouldn't do this because i'd sound like a hack because i didn't think of this but i would like to pretend that i would quote warren the ape from the show greg the bunny <laughs> Warren is trying to go out for a part on the in a, on a play with Gary Oldman, and he's in the scene. He's just being over the top, like like gracious to Gary Oldman, and he and he walks up to him and he meets him for the first time, and he says, he says, Gary, Gary, he says, I just wanted to tell you that I love you, and between your performances in Sid and Nancy and Hannibal, you were both. Vicious and delicious. <laughs> it might be one of the funniest things I've ever heard written. It's just like so good. <laughs> uh, so stupid on so many <laughs> levels. <laughs> um, I. I had to believe that Seth Green and Gary Oldman are like secretly best friends. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. 
uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, go, go, uh, go ahead. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I think as far as like what I would, uh, tough for me for this to, to make these lists. Um, but, but the definitely Heath Ledger, uh, would be the top one, uh, undisputed. Um, the, um, and then I, I do have a, a soft spot for Guy Pierce in Memento because I feel like that's a very tough role mm-hmm. to pull off. The the confusion and the certainty, the delusion, all the uh, elements that make up that character. Um, I feel like it was uh, very interesting. Um, mm. And definitely Gary Oldman will be in the mix. Uh, it is a subtle performance, and I'm not sure... Um, if if it's a stand, if it's like a top five, it's probably a top ten, but um, but I'm not sure if uh, if a top five, yeah. And I I do think Killian Murphy needs to be in the mix, uh, whether it's uh, he was a bit over the top in the Batman movies, but but in a good way, sort of like in the way that uh, it's what like Heath Ledger I think like really struck that balance of like being realistic but interesting. Um, and big, but not over the top. It's very tough to pull off those uh, performances. Uh, I took a took a note from Gary Oldman. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, Heath Ledger. That that was like a very Gary Oldman performance. I feel like mm. that Joker. Uh, yeah. Not not precisely, but but you know I the get fact. What you're saying. Yeah. That, to go big but not be over the top is very tough to pull off. Um, yeah, I, I mean the thing with Heath Ledger and. Uh, you know, I, I am going to put myself out there for anybody who is listening to this and wants to, you know, dox me or whatever. I, I, <laughs> I don't care. Uh, the, Nobody cares, man. I, I know that. They I, might. We haven't heard what he says yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess it all depends. It might but, go viral. <laughs> well, yeah. When I first heard that Heath Ledger was being cast as the Joker, I was just like, what the fuck is Christopher Nolan doing? I, I, it, it, what the, the guy from like a knight's tale and, uh, you know, the pretty boy from, uh, the Patriot, you know, like I, I, I had literally no respect for Heath Ledger <laughs> when he was cast as the Joker. I thought that, this was going to be a complete dumpster fire of a casting decision when Christopher Nolan made it. And then the movie came out and I have never been so happy to be wrong. Hmm. I, I mean, Heath Ledger did something with that performance that very few people have ever been capable of. Uh, I mean, from like, uh, I mean, I, you know, I mean, how many people watch that movie and still have it processing through their brains that he's Australian? <laughs> 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 and, I mean, like his accent just settled in so perfectly. <laughs> I mean, like he. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean and, and the accent is just like basic, you know, surface level. I mean, like the tongue flicking and the, you know, the, the teeth and the, you know. Uh, There's a lot I mean, to it for sure. Right. He, he, he really embodied that character in so many ways. And I don't think that people, I, I, I mean, to this day, and it's been like, what? Uh, came out in 2008 so we're talking about more than a decade (laughs) since that movie came out I don't think that people still really understand how great Heath Ledger was in that role Uh, I think people do I mean I I think it's borderline uh, I think we've mentioned this before but it's almost undisputed that it's the, the best villain in movie history I mean for me personally 
Uh, I mean, like, especially in modern cinema, like we said, like, uh, you know, Sugar and No Country and, and this one are just two, just the 21st century, you know, um, villains that just took villain, like, you know, the, Gary Oldman had a few really great villains uh, in the 90s and, but, um, but no, they definitely took it one step further. Yeah. Um. No, uh, I, I, I still, th- I, I still think that people are coming short of respecting what Heath Ledger did. <laughs> but I, no, I, I don't I, know. I mean, I, people still, there's memes about it. You know, there's uh, he won the Oscar. I don't know what else you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if Matt wants anything. I think he just, he just, <laughs> it, it, he just feels that. I mean, he won the Oscar for the Joker in, a, in a, an action movie. That's like, that's big. That's, that's very big. And and I honestly think that he would have won it either way. Like he would have won it even if he hadn't passed. Oh, like I that's, agree. I, that's the, a good that performance. Like it was the, not a pity Oscar. No, 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 no. I I was so angry that that movie came out at the same the same year as Tropic Thunder because any other year I would have given it hands down to uh robert downey jr in uh tropic thunder or big hairy hands down to tom cruise in tropic thunder but the moment the the nominations came out i was like nope nobody's taking this away from from were they nominated for that yep for supporting actor just like he he was he was a support in the oscars that was a crazy category huh it is a crazy category there are like no serious movies there (laughs) I, I could look it up real quick. I don't know, but uh, I don't know what else else they were up against. But um, I just remember thinking like those guys, and maybe it was Golden Globe. I don't know, but I thought it was Oscars. I'm pretty sure that was the the year Slumdog won. Heath Ledger. Oh no, I was wrong. Never mind. Um, uh, Robert Downey Jr. was nominated for Tropic Thunder, but um, but Tom Cruise was not. Uh, I think I probably just said that Tom Cruise needed to be nominated. Um, Josh Brolin was nominated for Milk and Michael Shannon for Revolutionary Road and um, Philip Seymour Hoffman for Doubt. I definitely would say Philip Seymour Hoffman deserved a nomination for that for sure. I would probably bump Michael Shannon for for Tom Cruise in that one. If it were, you know, up to me. As far as performances that I'm not sure if you brought up because I wasn't uh, completely up. But uh, ones that are not here, uh, definitely um, um, of the ones mentioned on the list, um, the not a big fan of The Prestige. I think it's a solid movie, but I don't think any of the performances are amazing. Uh, I kind of like David Bowie as Tesla. <laughs> I, I, w- I thought about that, but I, I thought um, Michael Caine was better to mention. Yeah, that's true. That that too, it is his best performance in a, in a, in a Nolan movie. And, I think uh, it, I think it's clearly better than his. Uh, I love his Alfred. I love all of Michael Caine's performances, but I do think the Prestige one is better than like uh, Inception or in, in um, the um, the dark or the the Batman films. Yeah, I mean Jessica Chastain also was a good performance for sure. Uh, her and uh, and Matthew McConaughey had a lot to do in their stellar. Oh yeah. Uh, so th- definitely uh, those two performances. Uh, but then also, I, I feel like you mentioned Tenet. I feel like uh, 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 you know, Robert Pattinson's um, I performance thought about putting him up there. Yeah. was pretty good. Like uh, potentially even good. better than uh, I, I like uh, John David Washington. It was a solid performance. But as far as like being impactful, especially with fewer scenes, mm-hmm. um, I, I feel like Robert Pattinson really, uh, really did a good job there. Um, and then I had one other one. I mean, I'll also um, Robin Williams in Insomnia. I actually feel like it was a better performance than Pacino. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> I, I have that movie and I want to rewatch it, but I didn't feel like listing anyone in that one because it's been so long since I watched it. When I think about that movie, the, the two things I think about the most are Robin Williams' performance, for sure, and also just the the scene where Pacino is so exhaustedly tired and he can't sleep and he starts duct taping the curtains to the to the wall so that the uh, so that there's no light coming in his room 
I like mm-hmm. I feel that scene. Like I that scene speaks to me. But I don't know if it speaks to me because of Pacino or if it speaks to me because of how Christopher Nolan shot the scene. You know what I mean? Like the camera, I think, is doing half the work. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, yeah, and I guess I don't know what's left. I mean, I, I think, um, yeah, and, and I, I do like Christian Bale, but I don't feel like um, either the Batman movies or the Prestige that that was, uh, um, you know, that neither of those were like top 10 for me as far as Nolan films. I mean, I it would be interesting to decide between him and Hugh Jackman in the Prestige. Uh, probably Bale was was better, but but they're just different. I'm trying to see if there's any movie that I'm forgetting. I mean, because because uh, I, I couldn't think of any performance that really like totally jumped out at me for uh, following. No, following. I mean, there's good performances, but not top Certainly. ten ones. Yeah. Um and um, Memento, I, I do like. Um, the performance by um, uh, Joe Pantoliano. Yeah, Joey Pants. <laughs> yeah, that was a good performance. Uh, I I I like that one. But but again, borderline top ten, maybe not. And um, and Inception. I mean, I, I think uh, Tom Hardy in Inception was not bad. But I, but I it was, was just trying to decide small performance. Tom Hardy or Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I went with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yeah, but it's it's all small performances, so I don't think there's enough meat there to really make a difference. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think I, I got close to ten with mine, mm-hmm. but um, but to be honest, I, I don't think per se that that Nolan is famous for getting outstanding performances. Uh, he's not exactly a Scorsese or anything like uh, as far as uh, like performances. I mean, he's got decent performances out of people but it's uh his his it's funny because you just said that like his uh, that the the scene with the, yeah. the camera was doing with pacino his his movies are the star like that's the, yeah. he's like yeah. the modern age spielberg like where like the the camera and, and what he does with it and and the way he sets up his scenes like you can put almost as long as an, it's an adequate actor, it's not going to mess up the scene. It won't be a distraction. The magic is all in his hands. You know, that's yeah. so it's almost like it's actually funny to talk about performances in his movies because it's not the most important thing. <laughs> it's a good movie. observation. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is, you know, like we bring up, bring up Robert Pattinson and, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, insert this as a, a another point that you know maybe we should review this movie but uh the movie good time the uh that was when i actually was like okay holy shit robert pattinson is like a serious actor (laughs) but uh yeah i I mean you know i i I don't know yeah when it comes to christopher nolan um yeah i think dole is kind of on point, you know, you know, you're, you know, it, it, it's, it's almost like this weight of massive talent where he just gets, I mean, he just gets the best of the best of the best everywhere around and gets people to dial it down in a weird way. Hmm. <laughs> Um, and there's actually a certain brilliance to that. I mean, you know, like I've, you know, I, I've been on stage. I've acted not well, but I've acted. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, that's something that everybody has always talked about is just like, it is a lot easier to take somebody who is way too over the top and get them to dial it down than it is to get somebody who's way too subdued and get them to dial it up. So, yeah, yeah you, you get somebody like Gary Oldman, you get somebody like Christian Bale, you get somebody who has demonstrated that he or she is capable 
of just being uh, maniacal, of just being like insane on screen, and then get them to put all of that behind their own brains and just play it straight. I mean, that's when you get really good, subtle performances. Mm. You know, like when you just get that sense of there's just something going on behind this person's eyes, and I don't know what it is. But this per this person is keeping it in control. That's when you get really good performances. Hmm. And, and maybe that's his style of directing too. Yes, that he uh, doesn't ask for too much. And and maybe um, and Heath Ledger was, if anything, was an outlier because yeah. maybe it wasn't Nolan's style, but but because it was so brilliant, he just went along with it. Yeah, like he he didn't uh, he didn't um, like bring him down. You know. Oh, well, I I think. Um... It, this might have been one of the more elegant, concise responses that I've ever heard. Uh, when somebody asked Christopher Nolan why he cast Heath Ledger as the Joker, uh, Christopher Nolan apparently responded, he's fearless. And that was it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it, I mean, still, like, I mean, it, it is one of those weird things where, uh, I, I mean, again, you know, you, you've got Gary Oldman in your movie and, you know, how many fearless performances has he given? And, you know, I don't know, well, you know, he, he's just kind of played it straight, you know, it, like straight edge, complete straight edge. <laughs> I mean, ultra straight edge as Gordon <laughs> in that movie. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, Christian Bale had already been in American Psycho, and, you know, he's shown his ability to, to go completely unhinged and so on and so forth. And he was always playing it pretty straight. And, you know, uh, yeah, I, I mean, Heath Ledger in that movie just, he, he, I, I mean, he went full not Christopher Nolan in so many ways. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's not the only time that, I mean, I feel like Killian Murphy's performance was a little bit big as well. And the, and, Definitely, um, Hardy, like in what he did, Bane was yeah. a bit uh, interesting, it was different. Um, yeah. so it's, I, I think it's, it is still a Batman movie, so the villains are going to be a little weird, yeah. You know, I mean, Tom Hardy gets a lot of a lot of shit for The Dark Knight Rises, and I, I think that, uh, in, in large part, that's just because it's just not as good of a movie as the previous two. <laughs> yeah, it's got a lot more holes. Yeah. Um, That's the episode we got to do is to watch both of those ones. Or all well, three we need them. to watch uh, all three. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I was going to try and uh, invite uh, the Armand for it. But, yeah, um, that would be a good one to do at some point. Um, so back to die with your city. <laughs> I came back to stop you. <laughs> I, I mean, I think that Tom Hardy overall did a pretty good job with that. And also, by the way, both Tom Hardy and Christian Bale are just like masters of changing their bodies. I don't know how the fuck these people do it. But, <laughs> I mean, like, it, it, what, what do you think? The, what do you think about the fact that Tom Hardy played the Picard clone in Star Trek Nemesis who was like skinny as all holy heck he's really skinny in rock and roller too 
Yeah, uh, and also Band of Brothers and everything like that. Yeah, all three of those performances, he's skinny and lanky, and he doesn't even seem tall, even though he is, like, I don't know what he is, but he's he doesn't seem nearly as tall as he does in other movies. Right, and then he bulks up to, like, Bane level. I mean, jeez. And then also Bronson, he was huge in that oh, one, too. Oh, yeah, Bronson. Damn. Yeah, he's only 5'9". <laughs> That's not that tall. No, and, and yet, you know, you... You put some combat boots on him and a flak jacket, and he looks pretty damn big. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a that that's a guy who's devoted to his craft. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, Christian yeah. Bale too. Um, but although, I mean, their best performances are not with uh, Nolan for sure. Not even close. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, Christian Bale uh, rescued on. I think is probably my favorite. Really? Thor it's 4. Decent and... Really? I'm <laughs> That's just joking. A... No, 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 no. He's very good in it, but that is not his best performance. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just... Uh, like, Christian joking. Bell, I mean, like, there's there's so many that I feel like would be better than Rescue Dawn. Rescue Dawn was not bad, but, you know, there's, uh, like, uh, was the Dawn American Psycho. American Psycho is one of his best, for sure. Yeah, and uh, The Machinist. That one's definitely pushing um, the boundaries. I, I, the, um, the Machinist was just the most abuse that he actually did to his body. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's also just uh, very interesting. Also, The Fighter. Yeah. A good performance. The Fighter was a really good one, yeah. 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 I mean, he um, was also just the fact that it's not his best oh, performance, but... But the fact that he played like uh, Cheney <laughs> so convincingly is just oh, a, I mean a feat. that one, yeah, th- that one. Uh, he is really the best thing in that movie for sure. There's no question about that. Like it's it's uncanny. You look at him and you you're, you're trying to see like it's crazy, <laughs> and you just can't see him. Like he's, he disappeared. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to see if anything else jumps out at me. Lately, he did Amsterdam, Ford versus Ferrari, and Hostiles. Um, all of those are great performances, but I don't know if I'd say his best. I'm trying to think. Yeah, uh, Ford versus Ferrari was pretty good too. It was pretty good. good I think I don't think any of those tops the Fighter though. The Fighter was better than all of those. Yeah, that be, might be my favorite performance of his. Oh no, Equilibrium, Equilibrium. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, that, 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 uh, that, gar- <laughs> that garbage movie. Yeah, okay. I'm just saying it to make Matt angry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah. I, I think it, for me, it'd probably be between American Psycho and uh, The Fighter. Those would be my two favorites of him. Um, trying to see if they're missing anything else. Uh... Yeah, most likely Killian Murphy is going to make this list after... Uh... Oppenheimer <laughs> comes up. You know, I, I'm not a. Sh- I, I I am ashamed to say it. Although I'm not. Um, uh, you know, I'll just say it. Uh, I am frustrated um, about the fact that I have not seen Empire of the Sun. I hear that he's he's very good, and that it's a very good movie. Oh, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I I you know I remember I, not I, being into that movie, but uh, but yeah, but I think it's a good performance. Yeah, I, I met the cinematographer on that movie shortly before he died. Uh, mm. so, like there was a, a, mm. a, a Alan Davio. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, uh, so that has a special place in my heart. So, mm. <laughs> but yeah, um, not <laughs> the funny thing is like you, you brought up um, Equilibrium and I'm just like, oh, uh, dear. It, it, what do you think Villajovich is going to be happy to have ultraviolet listed as the greatest performance that she ever gave? And then I actually, you know, maybe she will, but, uh, how I, dare you? <laughs> it's like you, you start thinking about equilibrium and then you just like start saying terrible things that don't make any sense. <laughs> Uh, Ultraviolet is a terrible movie, but uh, and it was directed by the same director who did Equilibrium. Yeah. But um, uh, but you know, 
uh, no, she's done way better than that movie. I mean, just the the Fifth Element, she's way better than yeah. that movie. <laughs> yeah, and and then there's many others too. I mean, I I did not love um, the Messenger, but her acting is good. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I really think that Dustin Hoffman kind of steals the movie at the very end, but you know, it's easy to do if you're Dustin Hoffman. 